Hey there, fellow seekers of the extraordinary. Welcome back to An Enchanted Life, the home of untold wonders and hidden tales. Today, we're diving deep into mythology to uncover the enigmatic origins of dragons. So, let's rewind the tape of time. The very word dragon comes from the Greek dracon. But our quest begins in the cradle of civilization, where the ancient Mesopotamians left behind a trail of cuneiform tablets that tell us of Tiamat, a primordial goddess embodying chaos and creation. She's portrayed throughout history as either a serpent or a mighty dragon. When her spouse Abzu is murdered, she goes on a rampage and kills his murderers, bringing to life the first dragons, whose bodies she fills with poison. Shortly thereafter, she's killed by the storm god Marduk. Many historians say this makes Tiamat the mother of all dragons. My apologies to Daenerys Targaryen. Also, my apologies if I've just mangled the pronunciation of her name. Egyptians believed in a great serpent god they called Apep, who was the mortal enemy of Ra, their god of light. In art and on crockery, Apep was depicted as an enormous serpent who lived under the Nile. And later, as the Egyptian pantheon evolved, he's portrayed as a crocodile. But most historical accounts agree that Apep was one of the earliest dragons, albeit with a bad attitude. In the end, though, Ra is triumphant and kills Apep. Yet another serpent dragon killed. In these earliest tales of civilization, dragons embodied chaos and evil in order to bring balance to the gods that provided protection, safety, and light. If we venture eastward, we'll discover a different kind of dragon, the majestic and benevolent beings of Eastern mythology. From China to Japan, these dragons symbolize power and wisdom and bring rain and good fortune. Dragons were regarded as an imperial symbol during the Tang Dynasty and decorated both imperial palaces and robes. Over time, five-clawed dragons were reserved for use by the emperor alone, while other nobles could use the four-clawed dragon motif. So this was a significant beast well removed from its earlier associations with evil. In Korea and Japan, dragons were serpentine and wingless. Korean dragons were said to be emotional protectors of the country and greatly revered. As I mentioned earlier, the Greeks also included dragons in their mythology. They had laid on Typhon and the Hydra that Heracles had to defeat. Yes, I said Heracles, not Hercules. Sorry, Disney, but you got it wrong. And we can't forget the story that dates back to AD 315 of St. George and the dragon he, he was said to have killed or forget the great worms of Norse mythology. Did you know that dragon-like serpents wound their way through North and South American indigenous mythologies too? North America has the horned serpent, while South America has the great feathered bird dragon. I'm going to mess this up. Quetzalcoatl. Sorry. There are many other dragons throughout the world's mythologies, of course but sometimes lost among all of those tales are the origin stories of the oldest dragons. Personally, I'm a fan of the more modern book and gold hoarding dragons rather than the dead ones, but that's another video for another time. So let's all raise a glass of our favorite beverage to the dragons of old, those that brought balance to the world as well as their great histories. If you enjoyed this journey, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more captivating tales from the realms of myth and beyond. Until next time, keep your eyes open and your minds curious.